We all set? All right. Uh, good afternoon. I am James Seabach. I'm an assistant sheriff at the LVMPD. I'm here to brief you on additional details as we know them today about the first officer involved shooting that occurred on Friday, December 30th, 2022. This officer involved shooting, number 13 for 2022, fatal number eight. The same time in 2021, we were at 10 OISs with six of those being fatal. This event was initiated as a person with a gun event on December 30th at 11.01 a.m. The officer involved shooting occurred in the 4,000 block of Calusa Circle, Las Vegas, Nevada, which is in the Northeast Area Command, and the map is on my left. The officer involved, I'm sorry, the involved officers are as follows. Number one is Officer Fernando Sotelo. He is 28 years old and has been with the LVMPD since 2017. In this incident, Officer Sotelo was armed with a Glock 17 9 mm equipped with a tactical light. The investigation revealed he fired 17 rounds. The second officer is Officer Alberto Guzman. He is 27 years old and has been with the LVMPD since 2017. In this incident, Officer Guzman was armed with a Glock 17 9 mm equipped with a tactical light and a patrol rifle with a 223 caliber. That rifle was equipped with optics and a magnifier. The investigation revealed he fired 10 rounds from his handgun and four rounds from his rifle. And the final officer is Officer Justin Terranova. He is 28 years old and has been with the LVMPD since 2017. In this incident, Officer Terranova was armed with a Glock 34 9 mm equipped with a tactical light. The investigation revealed he fired 10 rounds. All these officers are assigned to the Community Policing Division, Northeast Area Command. The suspect was identified as William Allen Conkle. He was a 60-year-old white male adult, 5 foot 10, 210 pounds. He is pictured there on my left. The investigation revealed Conkle was armed with a Glock 23 40 millimeter handgun. He fired one round during this incident. You can see the weapon on the screen to my left. The suspect's charges, had he survived, is assault with use of a deadly weapon, evading, attempt murder on a public officer, three counts, assault with deadly weapon on a public officer, three counts, resisting with a firearm, discharging a firearm from a vehicle, and grand larceny firearm. The details of the officer involved shooting are as follows. On December 30th, 2022, at approximately 11.01 a.m., LVMPD dispatch received a call reference a man with a gun near the intersection of Nellis and Bonanza Road. The caller stated he mistakenly waved at a male, later identified as William Conkle, who was driving a vehicle. The victim believed the car belonged to a friend. Conkle began yelling at the victim and pointed a firearm at him. Officers were dispatched to the area in an attempt to locate Conkle. Arriving officers were able to locate Conkle and attempt to conduct a vehicle stop in the area of Prince Lane and Charleston, which is near Lamb. Conkle refused to stop and fled the area at a high rate of speed, endangering citizens and officers as he drove through the residential streets. Officers initiated a vehicle pursuit. Conkle drove to Calusa Circle and Sacramento Drive, where officers were able to forcefully stop the vehicle. As officers were exiting their vehicles, the suspect produced a handgun and discharged one time. The three officers fired their duty weapons at Conkle, who was still inside of his vehicle. Officer Guzman transitioned to his rifle and fired four times into the suspect's vehicle. Conkle was able to put his vehicle in gear and then drove towards the officers. Officers once again fired their weapons at Conkle, who then crashed into a brick wall in front of the house. Officers approached Conkle and requested medical attention for him. Upon medical's arrival, the personnel, medical personnel pronounced Conkle deceased at the scene. During the investigation, it was learned that Conkle had stolen the firearm from a motorcyclist approximately one hour before this officer-involved shooting. Conkle had observed a motorcyclist who was carrying a handgun inside a holster which was on his hip. Conkle pulled up next to the motorcyclist, reached out of the driver's side window, and pulled the rider's gun out of his holster while he was stopped at the light. The motorcyclist confronted Conkle, and after a brief ver verbal confrontation, Conkle ran over the motorcycle and fled the area. The motorcycle rider was uninjured. I will now play for you body-worn camera videos depicting the officer involved shooting. The first video you're about to see was provided by a citizen during the interaction between Conkle and that motorcyclist I just referenced.
offers an entrance for the entire family. The Skywalk's incredible views are breathtaking and offer one of the most thrilling zip lines you'll ever experience. Yeah, shopping. Done? This next video is from Body One Camera of Officer Guzman, and what I'd like you to take note of is once the uh, vehicle, the officer, comes to a stop, you'll hear, if you listen closely, the brief shot being fired by the suspect, and you'll also see Officer Guzman uh, flinch and react uh, to that action. Okay, The next video is from officer, body one camera footage from officer Terra Nova's perspective. This concludes the briefing of the details. I can take any questions you may have. Yes. How, many, or how long did it take from the initial call to um, the shots fired? Was that uh, the initial uh, pursuit, the duration was roughly uh, two to three minutes from when they went to stop the vehicle through that residential area. A question about yes. Uh, did you all get any uh, phone calls? Anybody call in the part where he stole it, where he stole the, the weapon from the motorcycle? And also, can you describe any previous run-ins run you may have had previous to the console? Sure. So the uh, initial call that one actually came to uh, Nevada State Police's jurisdiction, and uh, they're the ones who had handled that call. Uh, before we uh, got involved with uh, Conkle. And as far as his previous or uh, any interaction with them, you'll have to, I'll refer you to our public records unit uh, to, we don't really don't release that here at this time. Any other questions? Oh, all right, thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Sasha Larkin, an assistant sheriff with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. I'm here to brief you today on the details as we know them about the second officer-involved shooting that occurred on December 30th, 2022. This is officer-involved shooting number 14 for 2022, non-fatal number six. Same time in 2021, we were at 10 OISs with four of those being non-fatal. This incident occurred as a non-fatal officer-involved shooting because the round fired by the officer did not cause the individual to lose his life. The coroner's initial ruling is that the cause of death was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The event was initiated as a person with a gun call on December 30th at approximately 7.44 p.m. The officer-involved shooting occurred at the 10,500 block of Angel Dreams Avenue. Las Vegas, Nevada, which is located in Summerlin Area Command. You can see the map pictured here on my left. The involved officer is Officer Larry Jones. He is 25 years old, and he's been with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department since 2019. In this incident, Officer Jones was armed with a Giselle SD-556 equipped with an optic and a tactical light. The investigation revealed he fired one round during this incident. Officer Jones is assigned to the Community Policing, Community Policing Division, Summerlin Area Command. The suspect is identified as Paul Horn Jr. He's a 58-year-old white male adult, six foot, approximately 170 pounds. He is pictured here on my left as well. 
The investigation revealed that Horn was armed with a Sig Sauer 9mm pistol. The investigation revealed that he fired one round during this incident. Horn's charges, had he survived, would have been assault with a deadly weapon, two counts, resisting with a firearm, and assault with a deadly weapon on a protected person. The details of the OIS are as follows. On December 30th, 2022, at approximately 7.44 p.m., our dispatch center received information of an assault with a deadly weapon call near the 10,500 block of Angel Dreams Avenue. Arriving officers contacted a male and a female who stated that a male, later identified as Paul Horn Jr., was armed with a handgun and had confronted them about speeding down the neighborhood. Officers identified Horn's residence and in an effort to de-escalate the situation, they established containment around his residence. Officers used a, vehicle, a patrol vehicle's public address system to ask Horn to surrender peacefully, which you'll hear once we play the body-worn camera video. Officer Larry Jones, who was armed with his duty rifle, was part of the containment team in front of Horn's home. A female immediately exited the residence and followed all of officers' commands. Approximately a minute later, Horn exited the house with a handgun in his hand and appeared agitated. Horn ignored all verbal commands from officers and walked quickly towards them while holding the firearm in his hand. As Horn walked towards officers, he raised the firearm in the direction of the officers and pointed the gun to his own head, firing one round from his handgun and shot himself. Simultaneously, Officer Jones discharged his rifle striking Horn. Medical personnel responded to the scene and transported Horn to UMC Trauma, where he was later pronounced deceased. I will now play for you the body-worn camera video depicting the officer-involved shooting. This is surveillance video from Horn's residence depicting the initial interaction that he had with the citizens driving down his street. Officer Jones' body-worn camera was activated, but it did not capture video of the incident. It only captures audio. We will play it for you now. This is surveillance video that we will play from Horn's residence as he exits his residence armed with a handgun. And due to the graphic nature of the video, we stopped it just short. This concludes our briefing. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Officer's body cam video, why was it only, why was it only audio? It was on and the video was activated, but the way that his arms were extended, sometimes the video camera will drop down and just get covered by his arms extended or his rifle was possibly mounted on his arm. So you're saying the suspect uh, went out and then shot himself in the head and then one of the officers fired a rifle at him? Sir, it appears on initial investigation the shots were pretty close to simultaneous. So the officer did not know that he had and shot then, himself. And then the coroner decided that the self-inflicted wound was what caused his death? Yes, sir. Can you talk about who the woman was who got out of the pickup truck? 
It's all part of the investigation right now. Thank you. Thank you.